Hello, dear developers. Let's talk today about the background services available in the modern browsers for us to build web front applications with improved user experience. In my session, we'll go through the list of available background services and I'll also explain how to use this superpower for organizing the best in class web front end applications. My name is Maxim Salnikov. I work as a developer engagement lead at Microsoft Norway. And I'm a big, big fan of uh, the modern web front-end development. Uh, to share my knowledge, to share my passion and expertise with this area, I organize multiple meetups and conferences, and uh, I'm often speaking and presenting at um, events like um, conferences, meetups, workshops, hackathons. Um, all for the technical community. You can find me on Twitter, webmaxru. I tweet mainly about web platform, about progressive web apps, service workers, and um, everything around. I'll be happy to stay connected with you. Back to our topic. What is the current state of um, web platform uh, in terms of uh, what can we do for our front-end parts of uh, web project? Well, we can provide some functionality which was never available on the web before. For example, we can keep our web front-end application and data it consumes always fresh. Or we can organize notifications for some future point in time regardless of the connection status. So, uh, we somehow can inform our dear users about some scheduled event regardless of uh, their connection status. Or we can automatically replay requests which were failed for, uh, for whatever reason. For example, when uh, our dear users suddenly went offline. Um, or we can provide long fetches which are connection resilient. I mean, of course, we cannot uh, have uh, any magic secret internet channel, but at least our fetch will not be canceled if something went wrong with the connection. It can be paused, it can be continued after, so very good user experience. You can uh, tell me that some of these points we can uh, implement in uh, our JavaScript code, in our front-end uh, application, without any need to learn uh, background services, without any need to use uh, service worker. Some of them with uh, one, uh, one limitation. This uh, functionality cannot work after user close the tab with our application, right? So the code we have in our main JavaScript bundle will disappear right after our application tab was closed, but not with the background services. We can have all these features available in the background. This is why uh, it, it has a name like this, right? And I will explain how this works. But first, what is a background service? This is a part of um, the browser, of um, browser's engine, which allows us to write and run a code uh, which will work in the background. And of course, this, uh, this code is uh, quite specific in, um, in multiple uh, terms uh, compared to our main JavaScript uh, code. First, it runs in a parallel thread, parallel to our main uh, thread. It's always good because uh, this way we have less competition for uh, processor resources, for uh, memory, so it allows us to build um, smoother and faster UIs. It has completely different life cycle. Um, as I already mentioned, life cycle of um, the main application thread is quite trivial. We start um, our JavaScript code right after the user opens the tab and, and uh, types our, our URL and some uh, first uh, bytes of our JavaScript bundle were fetched uh, and uh, we 
close everything, we unload from memory everything right after user closes the tab or maybe the browser itself. It's not applicable to the code we have as a part of background services. Um, it started by completely different occasion, which is event. So basically everything we have um, in our background services is a reaction to this or that event. So event came, our code uh, ran and then this, uh, this code uh, disappears. So uh, background services is not something that we want to run uh, for, for too long. So it's a fast and uh, short reaction to a particular event. Um, there are multiple reasons for this and I believe the main one is uh, we don't want to overuse the resources of the browser for um, running code which is part of background services. Just imagine if uh, uh, every uh, uh, application will register something that will run for long in background, well, <laughs> nothing left from, uh, from processor time and memory. Um, that uh, another very important part of um, this difference is the fact that uh, this code is always ready to let's call this wake up uh, regardless of the state of um, the main application um, itself so um, the code can uh, wake up and run even when uh, the browser itself, or to be pre more precise, its visible part is, um, is closed. And looking at these um, uh, parameters, I have analogy with uh, Phantom or Ghost. Because our application is uh, dead, um, the, it, it doesn't exist in, in memory, and uh, the tab this application is closed, but pieces of this application, which we have as a part of background services, is uh, waking up here and there. Um, they, live, uh, they live their own very short life and then magically disappears, like ghost, like phantom. Um, what kind of events can wake up our, uh, our code, which is a part of um, service worker, of course? Uh, first, everything connected uh, to the network state. Yeah, for example, uh, the situation when we go from offline state to online st state. There is a corresponding event which we can receive in our service worker and write corresponding code. Of course, in that case, uh, we are mainly talking about uh, um, the code which will try to uh, replay failed request, which we tried to do while we're offline. Also, if we do a long fetch, uh, if we download some uh, bulky resource, it, it will also send us um, statuses to service worker. Is, uh, is it succeeded or, or failed and what is the progress? Next is a family of events uh, based on uh, timings. Specific timings or some uh, intervals will have a closer look on uh, this in the uh, next uh, chapter of this um, slide deck. And of course, we can uh, wake um, up our service worker from the backend. Here we talk mainly about web push notifications. I already mentioned that uh, all the code we have as a part of background services intended to be uh, located at service worker, inside service worker. Basically, this is the only place um, of our application where we can get life cycle we need, which is completely separate from uh, the main thread. And uh, this is the only place uh, where the code is like always on, on duty, regardless of uh, anything. And um, multiple sources can send events to our service worker. First, application itself. Then browser, then operating system proxied via browser, then internet. Um, again, here we uh, go back to the case with push notifications. But how can we react? What kind of uh, payload, what kind of code can we write in uh, the service worker to provide 
better user experience. First, we can uh, organize bi-directional communication channel between service worker and application. For example, to update number of unread messages on uh, our UI if we build something like mail client or news client. But what if um, the tab with application is not open? What if uh, it's only service worker who is always on, on duty? Well, we can start the, the browser and open this application from our service worker and maybe then to organize this bi-directional channel. Or maybe for some scenarios we don't need to do this, uh, let's say, obtrusive um, action like starting the browser. Maybe we just want to show the notification. It's possible. Um, and uh, yeah, in that uh, scenario we only need a service worker. And maybe the most interesting scenario when we can run some custom code without any kind of user notification. I mean, uh, we do not start the application itself, we do not show any notification. Sounds a bit scary, but I'll explain you why it's still, uh, it's still cool. Back to background services. How to find the list of uh, what's available in the particular browser? First, it's um, not a surprise that the majority of these services are only implemented in Chromium-based browsers. Basically, if we look at this list, only push messaging is also implemented in uh, Firefox browser. Uh, how to find this list? Go to DevTools, Application tab, and uh, somewhere on the left-hand side, in the bottom, you'll find this list. Of course, as any part of DevTools, it's uh, very convenient and very important for us developers because uh, this particular piece of DevTools helps us to debug these background services, which might be non-trivial task at, at all um, without this special feature of uh, DevTools. Um, as I mentioned, it's all based on the events and sometimes it's uh, very challenging to predict when this event will come and uh, in which form and uh, what kind of reaction will uh, be uh, provided from uh, service worker side. So DevTools gives us a chance to record all these events, which is super convenient for testing and debugging. Okay, let's briefly go through this list. Uh, I'll explain you what uh, kind of services are those and we'll stay um, on a couple of them to have more details. Let's start with uh, API called Payment Handler. It's quite niche one for the scenario when you wish to build web-based payment service or even more precise web, heavily web front end web front-end based uh, payment service. It's uniqueness in the fact that uh, I believe it's the only uh, API and only possibility to install service worker on the fly without even visiting the origin of, uh, of this particular service worker with multiple limitations, but still it's quite interesting feature. Um, and mainly we use this API for managing UI of the payment services. Background sync, I already explained the scenario when user in offline do some actions and uh, for example, they write a uh, blog post and then they hit uh, button post or send um, and there is no internet connection at this particular moment. So instead of showing server not found or some other error, what we can do? We can preserve the data and register a synchronization. And uh, then at the first occasion when uh, online is back, when uh, the connection is available, and the code we wrote within this um, particular event listener will happen. And in this code, in many cases, we just repeat the fetch, for example, sending this data to our API. And uh, um, as I mentioned uh, before, this will happen 
automatically in the background, even if uh, the user closed the tab, even if they completely forgot that uh, something went wrong. Of course, uh, I think it's a good idea to provide some um, UI notification about, hey, now we cannot send your data to the servers, but it will be delivered later automatically. It's the main power of this particular API. Background fetch gives us possibility to detach data fetching process from the application uh, lifespan, from the main thread of the application lifespan. Um, for example, we want to download some large resource, some um, MP4 video file, um, and uh, the download started, and then user for example, uh, decided to close the application or something bad happened with the internet connection again, um, then we have all the tools to, uh, for example, pause this download and then to continue with this when it becomes possible. So we'll have the uh, UI very similar to UI we have for, let's say, classical download using Anchor Tag. At the same time, uh, what uh, differentiates this uh, way to download resources from the one with Anchor Tag, we have full control over the bytes downloaded. So it's not uh, just the next file on our uh, uh, operating system which was downloaded. No, we have these bytes available in our JavaScript code and we decide what to do. Uh, in many cases, we just want to put them into cache storage for later usage from our front-end code. Push messaging. Uh, it's the most mature API from that list. And uh, here I just want to remind that we have possibility in addition to showing the notification itself to also run custom code. Uh, so we are closing to running custom code as a background task. Uh, but in that case, we must show the notification. So there is no chance for us to organize this in uh, invisible for the user way. Okay, what's left? Notifications. Uh, on the one hand, it's the best friend of uh, push messaging API. As I mentioned, uh, there is no sense in sending push notification without showing the, the, the notification itself. But hereafter, We'll talk about a different uh, part of this API called notification triggers. And both notification triggers and periodic background sync are time-based activities we can run as a part of uh, background services. Um, I believe this is the only what makes them similar and they have very many differences. I gathered a full table of this to better explain these APIs. Uh, first, what are they designed for? Periodic background sync. It's to give a chance to the developers to organize refresh of the um, application uh, and data it consumes in the background. That means that it only makes sense to run this um, uh, this code and to send this event event to the service worker while the user is uh, online. Notification triggers is designed to give us developers a chance to schedule some notifications for the future time regardless of the connection. Okay, let's go through um, some of the parameters. Timing. As the name of this API says, periodic background sync is something based on intervals. While notification triggers, we schedule this trigger, this notification for one particular timestamp in the future. What can we do here and there? In PBS, we write the custom code itself. Uh, so there is no any magic way for uh, having our application fresh and data it consumes fresh without the code we write ourselves. So we just have this trigger when to run this code. Um, notification triggers is limited to only show the notification. Visibility for the user. PBS is completely transparent. I mean, it happens in background. If we don't want to inform user about some code is running, we do not inform user. Uh, in uh, notification triggers, obviously, the notification is uh, intended to be visible. It's native browsers notification. If we look at these three uh, criteria, uh, these three uh, descri descriptions of uh, periodic background sync, once 
scheduled, it will run for more or less forever until um, user explicitly deregister this or maybe reinstall browser from scratch. We can have uh, custom code there within uh, this event handler, hello Bitcoin mining. And this will happen all uh, completely invisible for the user. Sounds scary, right? It's exactly the, the custom code I mentioned uh, in my slide where I described uh, sources of the events. This is why there are multiple limitations and multiple considerations uh, about this API, about the case when this event can ever come to the service worker. First and foremost, the final decision maker on send or not send this event to service worker is the browser, is uh, what we call user agent. And it takes decision based on uh, multiple uh, parameters. First, connection. Uh, I already mentioned that it all makes sense for PBS to run in uh, online only. Uh, it was designed to run like this. While maybe the main power of notification trigger uh, is uh, for offline mode, when we don't have any chance to reach out to particular um, user device, uh, for example, to, to wake them up uh, if we build some uh, web front-end based alarm clock. So notification triggers will work on uh, both online and offline. Uh, prerequisites needed to ever run this uh, code as a part of these APIs. Uh, notification triggers, it only requires permission for the for showing notification and it's the same permission like we have for web push, while it's way more serious for PBS. First, um, there is um, separate explicit permission uh, required from user side to run this uh, code in background. And second, maybe even more important, uh, is the fact that application has to be installed on user machine. Luckily, these days, it's quite simple to organize installation of your web front-end application using web app manifest, using um, the fact that uh, browsers are well integrated with operating systems now, but still, um, it's uh, quite a serious requirement. Also, what I not listed here, um, but also uh, very important, this event uh, as a part of uh, periodic background sync will come to the service worker only on the same network where it was registered. Let's say it, uh, it's the same Wi-Fi network, for example. Again, it's uh, designed like this to not uh, break the user privacy. Let's have a look at some code. Periodic background sync. It all starts from the registration of this particular sync or periodic sync to be more precise. In the majority of the scenarios, we do it in our main JavaScript bundle. And I always recommend to do feature detection because um, this API might be available or might be not available under particular circumstances. And we don't want to uh, pollute our console with uh, red lines and uh, we definitely don't want to ruin core user experience. Uh, and then we provide only one parameter called mean interval. So we don't have full control over these uh, intervals where we want to receive this event in our service worker. We only can say something like, hey, please do not send this uh, event more often than, uh, more often than uh, 24 hours, for example. Uh, and what's next? Next, we go to the service worker. And with, uh, inside service worker, we receive periodic sync event, if we are lucky, if, we, if all these uh, conditions uh, are, uh, are true. And what's next? Next, we write our own code. Um, there is no magic which will help uh, us to update the application. We have to write everything manually. In majority of scenarios, you fetch, uh, for example, updated version of the application shell. Maybe uh, you trigger some API endpoints to keep uh, the data it consumes only also fresh. And um, I think that if we receive this event, we are already lucky, but uh, we can do step 
further towards uh, best user experience and do extra checks before running um, our update code. For example, we can check network connection type and only run this update when we are on a fast, uh, stable network. Maybe the user in data saver mode and then I, I suggest we can skip update at all. And after all, if we are talking about fetching some data, maybe it's a good idea to check if there is a space available on the user's device. If we talk about timing, how often can we receive these events if we only say, uh, if we only provide a minimal interval? In the best case scenario, it's 12 hours. And by the way, it's something that's uh, not part of the specification. Uh, every browser decides themselves uh, what is this, uh, let's say, timing uh, schema. Um, what it depends on engagement score. This is artificial index uh, calculated by, um, by the browser uh, and uh, it's about how long and how often the user interacts with your application. So browser uh, tries to do the best guess how popular your application is for particular user to uh, decide on how much resources it might dedicate to this particular application. If we look at the notification triggers, it uh, starts uh, also in the main thread and uh, same, I strongly recommend you to start with feature detection and by the way, here I illustrated how this notification might look like on um, Windows 10 uh, operating system. Uh, here we specify exact time point when we want to show this uh, notification. And uh, then as a trigger, we provide timestamp trigger and maybe in the future we'll have more triggers, not only based on timing, but maybe based on geolocation, maybe based on some other parameters. So I hope I uh, inspired you to have a closer look on uh, background services and maybe on these two specific APIs. What's about availability and uh, behavior of these APIs um, on particular browsers and uh, on uh, particular operating systems? I have a long answer for you. It really depends. Platform and operating system, browser and its version, browser settings and even flags. Uh, and after all, um, origin itself and uh, the fact is application installed or not. You can get all these um, details about every single browser and every single situation on the links I mentioned on this slide. But I have a shorter answer for you. Let's just think about these features like part of progressive web application. And uh, P in this acronym means uh, progressive in terms of progressive enhancement. So let's just think about these features like about something that might improve user experience and it might happen or not. Uh, and of course, technically feature detection is the mechanism where we uh, check all these um, availabilities. Let's sum up. The goal of uh, these APIs and uh, many other APIs which are part of service worker family is to catch up with what native code can do. And uh, in uh, some scenarios, the web can do even better than native code these days. Let's really keep user experience in the focus. And um, by using these APIs, we give something, uh, right? In, term, uh, in terms of uh, better features, uh, more convenient, uh, usage of the application, but we require something in return. Um, multiple things. First, uh, all these annoying permissions. Uh, second, all uh, security and uh, privacy uh, considerations. Uh, third, uh, consumption of resources needed for running this uh, background services. So let's um, Let's together with authors of these specifications find proper balance between what we give and what we require in return. Um, when it comes to developer experience, I'm super happy with the current situation. We have uh, web standards, we have great tooling. And uh, what I'm super happy about, it's just a beginning of uh, this great, great journey. I invite you to join 
open Slack team I organized a few years ago where we have more than uh, 2000 developers now discussing PWAs, service workers, background services, etc, etc. And on that, thank you very much. <laughs>